Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Primary Maths Club. Today we are going to be looking at quantitative reasoning. Um, quantitative, I quite like quantitative reasoning because it improves, in a way, improves your IQ. You can use it to test your IQ, see how you would react to maybe everyday problems. How can you, you know, connect patterns and bring out something out of it? How can you break the, break down complex situations? So it's it's a good way to see how much you can perform you know, simple tasks that require you to reason a little bit. Um, quantitative reasoning is, I would say, it's all about looking for patterns, looking for relationships, and looking for differences in a particular problem. So without much ado, let's go into um, exercises or examples today and see what we have. Um, so our first exercise, I'm just going to write down the problem. Okay. So we have problem written down okay so we do have our example now and we're going to look for remember we're going to look for patterns or relationships or differences okay so let's take this okay let's take this very example where we have um we have eight written up here we have two on the side we have four and six and we're going to look for patterns and relationships or differences okay so like i said or like i will do my first instinct is to look at something central or a big number to start with okay so in this example, um, we have eight up there, and we have four, and we have six, okay? So like I said, I'll go for the bigger number. Now, what is it about the remaining numbers that tell, tell us about eight, okay? Um, we can see 2 here if we multiply 2 by 4 we will get 8 so that's one idea another thing that can, that can tell us about 8 is to add 2 and 6 that's a second idea okay we seem to have been able to solve this problem let's apply our idea to the next one and see if we get the same thing okay remember we added 2 and 6 to get 8 so 3 and 4, does that give us 3? No. So this idea is probably wrong. Okay. Now the other idea that says 2 times 4 to give us 8. If we try 3 times 1, we get 3. Okay, so that one idea is right. Let's go back to the drawing board. What is it then about 2 and 6? Well, apart from 2 plus 6 to give us 8, we also have 6 minus 2 to give us 4. Let's try that idea on this one, okay? So 4, 6 minus 2 to give us 4, and 4 minus 3 gives us 1. That idea seems to be the correct one, okay? So we have two correct ideas now. Let's try them on the third problem. We have 3 times 3 to give us 9, so that's correct on this one. And we have 6 minus 3 to give us 3. That's also correct on that one. So that's how we solve these particular problems. So we're gonna have some examples for you to try out and see. Okay, so we have some empty spaces there and you will try to 
fill those spaces based on the ideas we've gotten from our samples or our examples. Okay, so try that now and see. Did you get that correctly? I'm, I'm going to put the answers up now and you see if you get them correctly. Well done. Well done. Well, this is one of the simplest quantitative reasoning exercise that you may come across. Let's move on to something different. We have 16 up here and we have 5 right here. We have 1 and 4. Okay, so my instinct will be to go for the bigger number. I don't know why, but whatever you want to start with is fine, but you're looking for patterns. So if we start with the 16 here, we ask ourselves, what else in this, this shape, this geometry? This, whatever you want to call it, this problem tells us about 16. We're looking for relationships, okay? So I think, well, if you look at it properly, uh, if you add 5 and 4 and 1, you do get 16, so that's not one, one idea we want to even consider. If we, okay, I know, 4 squared it's going to give us 16. Okay, that sounds okay. But what about a 5 and 1? What connects them? Um, so we've got one idea we think might work. Okay, so 5 and 1. What would connect five, 5 and 1? Well, I see that if you subtract 4 from 5, you will get 1. That's another idea. Okay, and that helps us to these two ideas help us to comprehend this problem right here. Can we apply our two ideas to the next problem and see if that solves it? Okay, remember we said 4 here, 4 squared give us 16. But 6 squared give us 36, yes. So our idea sounds good and it does apply to our second problem. So we hold it down. Our second idea says... 5 minus 4 gives us 1. Now, 13 minus 6 gives us 7. So that idea, second idea, stands for the second problem. Okay, so that's us. Can we then apply our two ideas to, to the... We apply our two ideas to the top problem. Okay, 5 squared gives us 25. Okay, that looks good. And 7 minus 5 gives us 2. Fantastic. So that's how we solve this problem. Then we can go ahead. Because normally, you would get this sample. It's called a sample. So that you can understand what relationships exist in this problem, what patterns exist in these problems. Okay, so we have been able to break down this problem and see how we can solve other problems that are similar to this. So let's apply it to, to the, um, some exercise, some, some other problems. Um, so what do you think will be the answer? to this question mark here. Well, remember, it's this squared, okay? And so that gives us 81. And to this problem, remember, it's this squared. So what are you gonna square to give us 64? What are you gonna multiply by itself to give us 64? It's 8. Okay. So, very simple. This is one of the simplest quantitative reasoning problems you will come across. But anyway, let us try and solve another problem. So, we've got another problem. Never mind. Don't be afraid. It's going to be a simple problem, I bet you. Yeah, it looks 
like it's got some waves and complexity to it but it's going to be simple really okay so we have our problem written we're going to look for patterns and relationships and differences okay if we want to solve this like I said my first instinct is to go for the big number or something central in this case in the last examples example we didn't have anything central but in this one we have something central and we also have a big number which happens to be the central number anyway so so 15 what's going on in this whole problem that tells us something about 15 mm, I can see that if I multiply 5 by 3 I'll get 15 fantastic but what about 9 and 6 what's happening with them oh yes well if I add 9 and 6 that gives me 15 yes it does okay I've been able to break down this problem very straightforward can I apply my two ideas to this next problem so 6 times 6 gives me 36 so that works and 21 plus 15 gives me 36 so that works an absolutely lovely idea so again we see how simple this Some is examples okay so we have an example and we want to try and find out what's in the quest the boxes with the question marks um so remember two things that i would do when i see a problem I would look for central numbers and I will look for big numbers I mean you can do this any way but this is just my own idea okay so this it doesn't look see it doesn't seem like there's a central number in here but there is quite quite a big number which is six here so what would you how would you get six from the other numbers here what's going on in this ship tells us something about six well I can see here that if I add these two lower numbers I would get six that's one idea I can see that if I multiply these two right left-sided numbers here I would get six so if I I would get six now okay so that seems to have taken care of but that seems to have taken care of all the numbers in here but let's we have two ideas let's apply it here and see remember we said if we multiply these two left-sided numbers we have six and if we add the two lower numbers we have 6 okay so if we multiply 3 and 6 we get 18 fantastic that works on this example however if we add 6 and 36 we don't get 18 so that idea is wrong we need to find out what relationship exists here in this lower area because we have taken care of this what about four what's going on here with four okay four is left out because when we multiply this we get this and when we apply the idea here it's correct but four is left out what's going on in here that tells us about four well okay so can you then try and solve this and post your answers in the comment section or on our Instagram page and yes I'll see you next time in the next video so thanks for watching make sure you practice 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 quantitative reasoning is absolutely interesting at reasoning out things looking for pattern and getting more intelligent so until I see you next time do you have a good time. Bye-bye.